All right, friends. Now that we've looked at the very basics of what pixels you should use and how to, you know, kind of get the basic hardware together for using pixels in a stage application, now we want to look at control, which is why I've got a really funky pattern going on right here. Okay, so the quick and simple of my setup here is that coming on from the last video, I have my Entech Pixel Octo here. I have followed the wiring diagram that's up on my screen right now for off page five of the Octo's manual for power connection using a terminal splitter. I'm using these orange Wego connectors. If you haven't used them before, they're handy for projects like this. Okay, so stripped wire, placed them in the connectors, no solder. Then I've got my pigtail coming out with an extension going to my lights. Those are plugged in directly to these pixels. Okay, this particular group of pixels is from Bosco Studios. It's four foot, so it's four by some other number. We'll look that up in a minute. And it's ready to rock and roll. So now I wanna pop in and show you both an Onyx and an Entech Elm how to control these pixels. Let's head over to the computer and dive in. All right, so now that we see how we've got everything connected, in this situation, I just have the Entech Pixel Octo on my local network. You could go direct to the computer, especially if you're streaming a lot of data, but it's pretty simple. I've got an old Octo and somehow I've got it into a mode where I'm streaming data to it successfully, but I would have to factory reset it to access the configuration page, I think. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and set it up as it is. So right now, I've got it in Onyx and I'm sending data. We're gonna show you Onyx first, even though Elm is easier. And I've got the first un A universe B sent. And you can see it's obviously doing stuff back there because we have this show open, which is our typical little showroom show um, and it's running. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new show. And while we do that, I'm actually going to go look up really quick because I forgot our Boscoyo Studio Modular Matrix. Okay, so these are what we have. That's what the lights are in, is this, a Boscoyo Studio Modular Matrix. And we pulled this up just so that we know that it is 4 by 42 which is 168 pixels, so four by 42. So that's what we're gonna end up entering into our various pixel control programs. Now I'll go into Onyx and I'm just gonna patch new fixture. I'm gonna patch generic RGB pixels. So generic color, RGB pixel. <clears throat> and there's different ways to make this work. Because I have an awkward number, I'm just gonna do one. And then I need 168 of those guys starting at universe one, patch it up. <clears throat> so now what we should be able to do is exit the patch and go here, select all of our lights, highlight them, ta-da, and we've got light. So it, it really can be that simple just to basically light up the pixels to you know patch them into a software, have them going out universe one, SACN in this case, set my pixel controller, the Entic Pixel Octo the same, and now we're good to go. In Onyx, we can play media on it just by going to our 2D plan, and I'm just gonna add them. So for example, I'll add my fixtures, there's 168, I say four columns, place, we'll drag it out, ta-da! We're gonna add a dial of zone, enable dial of support. I always do this first, it takes a couple minutes. Then we press new, place the fixture, <clears throat> done, quick and dirty, go to the dialos window, bring up its intensity, play some media, done. <clears throat> and just like that, we've got pixel mapped media playing on our display. We can see it either from my camera here or the front camera, he can zoom in and probably have it on the side. Thank you, JP. Looks really awesome depending on what we're doing. Looks like our pixel order is not zigzagged like in real life. So that is where we have a mapping problem, which is where Elm is a lot easier. So to fix this mapping problem, what we would do is we'd go to edit mode, because I can tell you that, for example, pixel one is, I think is this one. And right now this is pixel 165. So yeah, it's zigzagging side to side, which is a completely different order than the lights are actually in. 
So I would need to remap this. I would basically do four strings, drag them out of the 42 each and drag them in my zigzag as they're wired to be able to actually get an app re representation on my pixels. Granted, you only have to do it once, but it is kind of annoying. So now we're gonna go show you Elm. Elm, like I said, comes free with every Entic uh, pixel driver. I don't have my license in on this computer, so we're just gonna hit start trial. The free trial is fully functional. It just blacks out every five minutes. New stage, and again, this is the quick guide. We have other tutorials. So then we just add some LED strips. So we go one, 168, and then, or it's four, sorry, by 42. Okay, so that gets my 168 is four by 42. Okay, and it looks like it's actually 42 by four, no. No, I think this is correct. And then we're gonna do a zigzaggity. As for the wiring, so that's the arrows. And I think we should be able to just take this and turn it once we get it in. And then we're sending it out SACN, start universe one, add, ready to rock and roll. Then we just resize it to be more like what we're actually doing. We can then grab it, yeah. And we should be able to just turn this whole thing, get all four of them. Now I'm just using the arrow keys, maybe, nope. There's probably a quicker way to do this, I admit. It's been a minute, there it is. See, that's the quicker way. It's been a minute since I've been in Elm. Drag it up bigger, move that quad arrow guy. Okay, so that approximately looks like what we've got. You can go to testing mode. Test patterns are great because not only can you test color, you can make it scroll. So what that's gonna do is you basically move it now, somehow, like that. And it's gonna show you whether what you're doing is matching with what you did. Same with this one. And as I can see, I am indeed upside down and backwards. And so now I can go, okay, just turn it, everything happens live, just like Onyx's Dylos. Boom. Boom, it's backwards on your camera, but it's it's forwards for me. Okay, so now that we know they all work, we go ahead and we turn off the test mode. We can go to the media. Media is preloaded, but you can load more. And then I can go to live and I just play something, oops. And ta-da, I see exactly what I'm playing on those pixels. Now. Elm can actually be controlled by other lighting consoles through DMX input over your network. So that's super cool as well. But as you can see, I mean, we're eight minutes and 23 seconds into this recording. And I, you know, well, it was a separate recording. I spent a few minutes showing you how I wired things roughly, how they're plugged in, how we use built-in X-Connect connectors and extensions available from us at Above AVL, and then used either Onyx or Entex Elm to control them. And then the possibilities from there are endless. Actually, both Elm and Onyx can receive NDI input so that you can send like your slide backgrounds if you're a church from a program like ProPresenter. Um, you can send other video, et cetera, and you're really able to make things look really awesome. If you're looking for any of this stuff, then definitely check us out at aboveavl.com. We've got everything, we, we try to keep it in stock to make these things happen. If you're building a project together, don't hesitate to reach out to us via our contact page for a quote. We can bundle some pixels with your pixel driver, let you know what power supply you need, and then you can follow these tutorials, plus the ones inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs, which go into more depth, more detail, and have the community where you can ask questions, and voila, you too can make a great design for your next stage. If that sounds good, give us a big thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.